Whatever. Alright, this is uh, part six of my MMX 100% speedrun tutorial. Uh, if you've been following her along, we've already covered the intro. Penguin, Wanger, Eagle, Mammoth, and now we have moved on to Spark Mandrill. Spark Mandrill is one of the tougher stages to execute at a high level. It's got some pretty good uh, easy strats for beginners. Lots of tornadoes. Tornadoes are OP as heck. So uh, let's just dive right in. First things first, we've got a blue guy. You might remember these guys from the intro. Um, we're gonna use that ice stuff we talked about in the previous episodes where you can put it inside him and the ricochets will hit him as well. Um, you can do that two ways. You can have him spawn on top of it. And you can put it right next to him. You can shoot one when you're right next to him. And you're gonna do both of those. And in order to accomplish that, what you gotta do is you gotta shoot first and then dash. So you don't wanna dash right away. I come in holding right, swap on the way down to ice. It's just one swap left. Shoot and then dash. You don't wanna shoot and dash at the same time because it'll just hit and ricochet off. So you wanna shoot, then dash, and it should he should spawn on top of the ice and take the majority of the damage. And then a dash and a jump, and shoot him at another one point blank to finish him off. Now, from here, there's a couple different strategies. Um, there's this fire wave strat, which is pretty good. It alleviates a bunch of the lag that would normally be present in this section by killing this this blue guy up top here, the one that was here. Or you can uh, ignore him entirely. Um, and use a pink shot. The pink shot strat is the fastest strat. Um, coupled with the fire wave to reduce lag. Let's see, notice the big lag difference in the beginning. Um, the only problem with the fire wave strat is that uh, sometimes you might try to swap early or something. You have to wait for the full charge before you can swap off a fire wave. You can't swap while the fire is, is out, right? No swapping allowed here until the full charge and now you can swap. So, what can happen sometimes, and this is pretty bad, is you'll come up down here and you'll drop a charge fire away, and now you gotta just wait until it's the wall, because you can't swap while that's out either. So, if you don't wanna risk that, you can just do this pink shot. Oops, instinct takes over. Um, the cool thing about this pink shot is that if you do it properly, it goes through and hits both of them. In order to make that happen, though, you can't just shoot a pink shot. Because they'll just eat it. You've also got to mash lemons out after you've released your pink shot. Um, I think three, maybe three or four would do. I just fired a bunch of them. You also need to shoot at least two more at this next guy after you've killed the first one and then quickly swap to ice and finish him with ice. So the fastest strat is gonna, oh yeah, you don't wanna swap the fire wave, the fire wave early either because you'll end up stuck on the ladder while the fire wave's charging. So make sure you're at the top. This is the fastest method to get through here and get this sub tank. Pretty good. Um, a really easy method, a very beginner friendly method is to just use tornadoes. Ignore this guy, come down here, and drop a tornado on this guy. And you notice you kind of have to wait, and that's why it's not the fastest strat. Um, once you get here, it's pretty easy. You need the, you need the sub tank either just barely off screen, or just barely on screen, and you can reach it. Again, the boomerangs are going to curve down if you're moving down when you shoot it. Uh, a curving up boomerang is not going to reach it. So... Um, optimally, it looks like this, and away you go. Um, with the easy strat, oops, you can just ignore, you don't have to charge, you just drop one tornado on him, swap the boomerang, grab and go. 
pretty simple. Um, from this boomerang shot, you're gonna want to start a charge. Oops, that's that's that fire wave I was talking about. From this boomerang, you want to start a charge right now. And you don't have to wait for this; the thing will it'll come with you. Usually, you'll collect it on this ladder as you're running away. So, start your charge. Come here, get the drop. Now there's a couple different ways to deal with some more of these blue guys. I prefer the tornado. Charge tornado just takes them out immediately. And that's just one swap left from the boomerang. Really easy. And you can beat the drops as well if you're fast. You can go down the ladder without collecting that drop. Um, another strategy, I know Baba uses this one. He'll do the pink shot. Huh. And yeah, and he shoots a few lemons as well with the pink shot. Not my favorite strat. Requires too many inputs. I just I just pop the charge tornado. Another way is uh, ice. You can use an ice sled and then a ice shot to take him out. Ice sled and then a shot immediately after the sled breaks on him, like that. Um. Honestly, I don't see any reason to not use the tornado. It's not like it causes lag or anything. So, I would recommend, highly, the charge tornado. Um, let's see, I don't know if I've covered ladders very much, but when you're descending a ladder, it's best, this is slow, right? Climbing down the ladder is really slow. When descending a ladder, if you just hit jump, as soon as you grab the ladder, you'll let go and fall. It's much faster than climbing down the ladder. Now for this next blue guy, uh, you can either just stick with your, your tornado strats if that's what you've been doing, because that's always going to be the easiest strat. It's always going to be, not always, but usually going to be the slower strat as well. So what I do is I go to ice and you see this uh, brace here underneath X, or this wall or whatever, this thing. Um, I'm looking at the, the left side of it, and X is forward knee, and that's when I want to shoot my ice shot, my first one, because it'll, it'll do the same thing as the first blue guy, it'll, it'll spawn on top of it, and take the, all of the damage, and then it's just one more ice shot up close, to finish him off. Um, you could also, again, if you're if you're into the ice sled thing, you could do the same thing to this guy. Ice sled and an ice shot. Uh, I guess if you wanted to, you could probably do another charge tornado. I never thought about that. Always just use ice. Huh. Because the charge is definitely ready in time. Yeah, you could just do another charge tornado or a regular tornado. The thing about regular tornadoes is that you gotta kind of wait for them. Otherwise, you can outrun them, right? And it'll just despawn. And that's the problem with tornadoes. But the way I do it, again, ice shots. I'm looking at that this stanchion here as a visual cue. Two ice shots to take them out. Now, coming up is we call it Zam Hallway. Well. The strat is called Zam's Hallway. This hallway is kind of a, a struggle for a lot of players. And there's fast way, slow ways. There's an easy way and a hard way. The easy way is the slow way and the fast way is the hard way. So, um, First thing, we got this light guy. The goal of this is to get through here without stopping, right? And we also want to kill as many of these light birds as possible. Because they generate a bunch of lag when they're on screen. See how laggy that is. So we want to kill as many of those guys while also going fast and not, um, not slowing down. So in order to do that, we can use an ice shot here. This one's a little tricky, and he can drop ammo on your head, which is a pain in the butt. So a lot of people opt to just ignore this first one. He doesn't cause a bunch of lag on his own because there's not a lot else going on. But if you can pull it off. It's, it's worthwhile, I think. Um, 
You guys just show the hallway at full speed. Zam hallway style. This is the fastest way. Um, if I can get my dashes to work properly. Lemons and ice shots. A lot of them. So. That's going to be the fastest way through. It's pretty difficult to pull off. There's a lot of swapping back and forth, but it's just Ice and Buster, and they're right next to each other, so it's only one swap at a time. So it makes it a little easier. The idea is Dash Lemon and Ice Shots. Again, these Ice Shots are super powerful if you put them up close and inside the enemy. You can take out Ostriches in one shot with them. A problem that I've seen happen, and it's happened to me pretty frequently, is that you're trying to shoot the ice shot inside this enemy, but he's so skinny that you can actually put your buster on the other side of him and shoot through him without hitting him, like that. So that's something you got to be aware of. Honestly, you don't really even need to dash, because X's buster's out in front of him a little bit already. Just dashing extends that a little bit, so when you're doing it, you just want to be cognizant that you don't want to get too close to these guys because you'll just shoot through them and, and then you won't kill them. Your shot will actually spawn behind him. So, that's that ammo I'm talking about. Oh, again, these, these stairs, with, with good movement, you can get a dash off the tip of these stairs without ever letting go of right. You land down here and you can get one. But, if you're just learning, that's going to be pretty hard, so you might want to let go of right just a little bit. Not enough to land on that second step, but enough to give yourself room for a dash here. So maybe just let go of right just enough so you can get up here easily. But uh, the strat, okay, lemon, ice, and then we want to... You can make it all the way from this, this step to on top here without kicking the wall or anything. That's not gonna make it. You have to jump from the very edge, but you can make it here. And that's ideal. And then you wanna shoot another lemon here, jump over him, because he's gonna drop stuff. And now we wanna dash lemon, lemon the flying guy, and then swap the ice and finish off the bird. And then from here, it's a lemon. I shoot two more lemons, you really only need one. Uh, three makes the ice shot a little more lenient, but one is enough so that you can finish him off. And then I, I, I like to land on this low step and jump all the way over and tornado this guy on the way to the ladder. Now, for an easy strat, again, just a bunch of tornadoes, so ignore this guy. Tornado here, you, you're gonna have to wait, right, because the tornado starts out pretty slow. It's gotta build some speed, so... And that'll take out all three of those guys if you if done right. Tornado right in his face. And you'll get the light bird as well. And now you want to jump down here and jump up and shoot this tornado. You don't want to shoot it low because it'll it won't hit this light bird. You want to jump up and shoot it high. And then you gotta wait here. Otherwise the light bird will hit you. But it'll also take out this last ost ostrich. Well not the last one, this is the last one. charging already. Don't charge in this hallway. Because that's just going to add extra lag. So, at full speed, the, the tornado strat is still very easy. Let me just show you from the beginning. I shouldn't have made a safe stay way over there. Oh my gosh, these light birds are impossible to deal with going backwards. Okay, full speed tornado strat is pretty simple. Pause, pause, pause again, pause here again. Um, when you kill this last ostrich in this hallway, you want to start charging for Thunder Slimer. You're going to want to start the Thunder Slimer fight off with a charged tornado. I'm not going to start charging early again. Um, okay, this fight, Thunder Slimer can do some annoying things like the bubbles. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, and you just gotta shake your way out of it. 
like this pattern is garbage. But usually he won't be in your he won't give you bubbles. But you wanna start with a charged tornado, climb the wall, hit him with one regular tornado. And then finish him off with a second charged tornado. Now, when I'm killing Thunder Slimer, I wanna make sure that my last charged tornado is in the middle of Thunder Slimer himself. That way, if he does decide to throw more bubbles, the Charged Tornado will take it out and minimize any lag. Because having these bubbles all over the place can be pretty laggy as well. If you haven't noticed, reducing lag is a pretty common theme in the speedrun. But he should fall pretty quickly in 100%. Just a Charged Tornado, a regular Tornado, and another Charged Tornado. Piece of cake. Now the rest of the stage is pretty much all tornadoes. Tornado is pretty OP. So, uh, it should only take one kick to get up this wall. Again, this is this pre-acceleration thing. You don't have to worry about it, but I do a short hop off of here to start falling sooner. So you just dash off. Um, here, you want to fire a tornado just before you kick the wall so that it takes out this guy before you get here. If you're, if you fire it as, you're kicking the wall, you're gonna crash and go. So you wanna fire it just before you kick the wall. Give it time to get there. And sometimes it'll take out this turret. Jump off just gives us like some pre-acceleration downwards. Like if you start, you can start falling before you, the, the threshold here, the corner. It's like pre-downward acceleration, because you start falling, you jump. This is a bad example, because it's so small, it's so minor, but back in the Mammoth stage, it, it has some more poignant uses, where like you do a really big jump, so you can build acceleration before you come to the corner where you're actually going down. It's very minor, but if you want to save all the frames, it's something you gotta do. So back to this guy. Um, the same tornado that takes out this guy may or may not take out this turret. If it takes out this turret, great. If not, you can just do a short hop between them. That bullet won't be in the way. Let's just do it here at full speed. If it takes out the turret, you can just jump in front of that guy and never let go of right, and you'll make it all the way down. Here, no problem. If it does not take out the turret, um, I'm, I'm nice and slow. You can just do a short hop in between them and then another hop down the hole. Pretty simple. With good movement though, it should always take out the turret. Okay, down here. This is a lot of enemies in your way, but if you're fast, they're not gonna get any bullets out. You can just move on avoiding enemies. One thing I like to do, for no particular reason, is to just shoot that guy with a tornado. It doesn't help at all, I just, I don't know why I do it, I just shoot him. <laughs> um, coming up, we've got this heart. I'm just gonna show you where it is. The heart's up here, right? So, uh, there's a couple different ways to get that heart. The easiest way is just gonna be to come over here Shoot this guy with the tornado. Wait for your tornado to go away. Swap the boomerang and do a dash kick. With no D-pad. One dash kick, no D-pad. And then shoot as you're ascending. And the boomerang should come around and collect it and come back. It's pretty easy, albeit not the fastest strat. The fastest strat we call pull heart, and it involves a tornado here and then grabbing the heart like that. Now, in order to do Paul Heart, it's kind of a finicky trick. You gotta fire this tornado, and it's gotta be quick. And then you gotta swap the boomerangs. Now, from here, you gotta jump off the very edge of this, this ledge here. The very edge. And you want to shoot your boomerang near the peak of your jump, but just before, so that it curves upwards, and you gotta let go right. Now, 
Letting go of right is, is the uh, most important part. Maybe not the most important. They're all important parts, but it's like the most overlooked part. You gotta let go of right. Otherwise, the boomerang will just curve down anyways. It'll fall to you. Right? So if you let go of right, the fastest way for the boomerang to get back to you is to go up. And sometimes you may throw a boomerang out there that looks like it's not gonna get the heart, and it'll totally come back with the heart. But you let go of right until you see your boomerang start curving up, and then you can start moving right again. It's really not that hard, it's just kind of tricky. And if you look at my deep, uh, my, my input display above my head here, you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm shooting and letting go of right, like, almost the same time. You can get some of them in there pretty deep. Remember to let go of right and to shoot as you're ascending, and you, you should be able to figure this out. It saves about a second, I guess, over just coming over here and doing something like that. And you can all, I mean, there's no reason to not go for it, because if you miss, you can just do, do the rig, the other strap as a backup. It's pretty simple. But. In all honesty, this trick is not as hard as it looks. You should be able to pull this off with minimal practice. Now, after you collect the heart, whether it be with, with the backup or the, the easy strat or with Paul Heart, you want to start a charge from this boomerang. And then as you're climbing down, these guys are going to be in your way. You can either dash up over them, or you can wait for them to go by and just drop. This first one, more of a problem. What I do is I do a little bit, a little tiny wiggle to the right to give myself a little more time to get over him. Because if you just try to go straight over him, you're probably going to bonk him unless you're really fast. Well, I guess with 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 this one, you have a little more room to play with. But with Paul Hart, he's kind of right on top of you. But you can get over both of them pretty cleanly. Now, you're holding this charge because there's another turtle in your way. Uh, you'd swap left once to Tornado, and just jump over this and take him out with the Tornado on the way through. It's pretty simple. Another way, slightly faster and involves no risk, because that turtle can drop ammo on you, which is a bad thing. You can just um, you can go for this turtle hop. It's pretty tricky. Like the timing is really precise, but you can clear all the way over him and land on top of this without doing a wall kick. Oftentimes you'll see me I go for this, this turtle hop, and oftentimes you'll see me just come up just a little short. I need you to die. You'll see me come up just a little short and have to do a wall kick, but you're not going to take damage most of the time, so it's not a huge deal. Having to do the wall kick is going to be a little slower than doing the tornado and not getting ammo, but it's going to be faster than doing the tornado and ammo landing on your head, so... Um, but ideally, you just make it all the way across, like so. That's up to you. I recommend the Tornado if you're starting out, and if you're really trying to go real fast, then maybe upgrade to the Turtle Hop. Not a huge time saver, but it saves some. This Turtle's a non-issue, you just jump right over and climb the ladder. Here you want to swap back to Buster, and then when you're climbing this ladder, uh, you want to jump down here, there's going to be a Light Bird, so take him out right away, and start a charge. You're going to want a green shot here to take out this walker who's in your way. And uh, the timing on this green shot is kind of finicky. I release just before I wall kick. 
If you release too late, you'll shoot over the top of him. Or you might shoot the wrong way. I release right before I kick, and it gets him almost every time. So, kill the light bird. Also, yeah, I, I just dash right off here and shoot to take out this other light bird. You can also do a tornado if you really want to. You can ignore this guy and do a tornado, and that will take care of him. Um, but the fastest threat's going to be the buster. Shoot him. There's another one. So from here, I'll jump to this step. There's another one that's going to spawn right there. So as I'm jumping up here, I shoot. There's another one that spawns up there. So as I'm jumping from this ledge, well, you can do two things. You can dash off and wall kick up here and just ignore him. But the fastest way is going to be to go from here straight to the top. These light birds are impossible. Straight to the top while killing this light bird as he spawns. Both minimizes lag and wall kicks and exit extra movement. And it's not very hard at all, so. Here. Oh my gosh, these light birds are gonna beat the death of me. <laughs> I gotta use up all my health somewhere. Okay, so here. Um, you can just dash off this ledge and you'll land down here and do a wall kick and you can shoot this guy with one lemon as you're going by. You want to start a charge too for the upcoming mandrel fight, so what I usually do is I'll do a little short hop and shoot him on the way down. That way if he does drop anything and I'm low health for some reason, it'll land here and my wall kick will take me over the top of it. But either way, if you kill him like this, just start a charge, because you want to have a blue shot ready when you get to um, Spark Mandrill. Now, at the start of the Spark Mandrill fight, uh, I've got no inputs. Right, I just want this blue shot to go across, and it, it'll hit him no matter what pattern he does. He's got uh, four patterns he can do. He can punch, he can jump to the ceiling and, and swing on his monkey bars or whatever. Um, he can punch the ground and shoot sparks, or he can jump towards you. She just does what she wants to do. Yeah, there's, that, that's his fourth pattern. So he's got four patterns total. It can't be. Um, I guess we can cover what kind of damage stuff does. The blue shot does two damage. No, it does three damage. I lied. Um, regular lemons are gonna do one, obviously. Dash lemons two. I suppose the green shot probably does two. The blue shot does three, yeah. So the green shot does two. And uh, ice shots are gonna do three. And there's weakness. And they also freeze it. So this fight can be very very much cheesed. You can just wait for him to break free and shoot him. It's very, very simple. Um, the optimal strat though, you can actually hurt him. His iframes wear off before he breaks free from his ice. So actually hit him twice every time you freeze him. Now that's going to give him an action in between freezes, so you're going to have to be aware of what he could potentially do to hurt you. And that's why you see me kicking the wall. It'll, I can get over sparks, and if he punches, I'll also go over the top of him. If you're trying to be optimal, um, You're going to be shooting ices early, timing them so that they'll hit him when he's, his iframes wear off. But if he punches like he just did, he's going to be closer than you expected and it might not freeze him. And that's why I kick the wall after every ricochet shot, so that in case, it, you can dodge the sparks and in case he punches, you can jump over him, like so. So. 
Um, let me just do a fight, a full fight. And it's pretty simple. Honestly, it's not a very tough fight. A safe strat you can use is you can wait just a little bit so that if he does punch, he still gets frozen. <clears throat> What's up, Jerk? What's up, Doris? What's up, E942? I don't know what else there is to say about this fight. Um, I guess the, the reason we start the fight with his charge shot is so that we finish the fight while Mandrill is frozen. And it just makes it that much easier to take center stage for the killing blow. He's totally frozen. You could bonk him if you want to, or have to if he's taking center stage. Because again, you want to be in the center of the stage every time you kill a Maverick. I mean, you could just do ice the whole time, Drago. If you wanted, but. And finish him with a dash limit or something. But if you do, if you start with ice, the pattern will be backwards. So he won't be frozen for the last hit. See, he can do whatever he wants here. It just makes it a little easier. Also, when he punches, he'll get knocked back by the blue shot. But it also hit, it hits every pattern. And you know, you'll notice when he's frozen, I'm shooting him point blank to try to put the ricochets in him as well. That's not for extra damage, that's just um, maybe some lag reduction, but also it allows me to shoot ice again sooner. And then every time I'm shooting one when he's not frozen, I'm shooting it at the wall. And that's just to cover um, more area, cover more patterns. Let's see, when he jumps, he gets hit by the high ones. If he punches, he gets hit by the low ones. I think I have. Yeah, see, he gets knocked back when he's punching from the blue shot. It also works with uh, range shots, I'm pretty sure. I'm down. Nope. Yeah, green shots also knock him back. But. The primary purpose of the of the blue shot is so that you can finish the fight with him frozen. So you've got all the time in the world. You don't have to worry about him punching you or something. Yeah, you missed it. This is the end here. I can use him being frozen to, to take center stage much easier. So when he punches, when you're doing one of these wall shots and it doesn't hit him, it's pretty easy to, uh, to sort of panic and take a bunch of damage. Because he does do quite a bit of damage with that punch shot. But all you gotta do is jump over him like that and then shoot him again from the outside. It's it was covered. Shady. It was covered. So you'll just have to check the highlight later. Or now, whatever. I mean you can can you go check it right now? Anyways, yeah, this fight's pretty simple, and if you really want to cheese it, like I said, you can just... You can just keep him 
frozen the whole time. But it's obviously much slower. Oh yeah. If you yeah, if you're on the wall when he punches. Yeah, you'll fall off the wall. So you wanna be a little careful. Just just recognize that he's punching and kick off the wall quickly and get over his head. straightforward fight if you're using ice. If you're trying to do Buster all this stuff, it can be a little tricky. <laughs> but <clears throat> anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I guess that was part six. Part seven will come up soon-ish. I guess, whenever I feel like doing it. Uh, part 7 is going to be Armored Armadillo. Another fairly straightforward stage. Lots of riding on carts and stuff, but it's fun. Couple, couple cool ideas there. So, I will cover that soon. Until next time. Peace.